I started to um, play with them guns, caught an armed robbery, went to Rikers Island, came out. And then I got shot around when I was 17. You know, shot in my chest, came out my back at a house party. When the Bloods and the Crips came out here, I used to go against it. Bam, we from Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah, we yeah. from New York. Okay. His name is Mohammed. He's moving all of the cigarettes. And he's the Amir. Fortunately, in prison, you got to get the best of the worst. He's like, yo, come down here. Friday, we have another service. You come down and I'm going to hit you up. The whole time, he's luring me into Islam with the cigarettes. <laughs> Today, I'm going to do a little interview. Um, you guys are going to know more about Islam, his story, you know, how he came out of prison, how he became a Muslim, how he made millions through calisthenics, um, through social media, f from selling his own product. And one thing you guys have to know, when I first started calisthenics like six, seven years ago, Allah Mubarak, I saw his video on YouTube and he inspired me a lot in calisthenics, even with Dean, even with entrepreneurship and like the mindset in general. So today we're going to know about him, how he started, he, he was pro, he was involved in big gangs. <laughs> he did it, he did everything, but we think in the end, we think in London is bad. I'm telling you, but when you come to New York, when you come to Brooklyn to the hood, it's nuts, bro. I'm not trying to glorify it, but it's nuts. Some of the story he told us, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us from it. But I yes, mean, I mean. Today, rip right. I'm gonna call you rip right here, because that's yes, what I know. Yes, yeah. so love that. Again, look, just from the beginning, where you grew up, how you got involved in gangs, why you were in prison, you know, all of that, just a bit about your soul, how you made millions through through social I, uh, media, yeah? So all of that, bro. Yeah, so right now I'm 39 years old. Alhamdulillah, I was um, born in Miami. Uh, Jackson Memorial Hospital left when I was about three years old, so I didn't have much time in Florida. Um, that's another state. Um, we moved to New York, Brooklyn, Flatbush. Um, basically grew up in Flatbush, was young, playing basketball, doing what everybody else is doing. is a little different than this era now. You know, this era is all about the internet. A lot of the kids is not going outside, not playing. So we was outside, manhunt, um, tag, all of those games just outside. And after being outside for quite some time, you know, you pick up bad habits. You know, obviously my father was what we call a gunman, right? Jamaican. So we, I'm Jamaican. So, you know, my pops was known, you know, for different homicides different you know so it was it like i consider it hereditary because from my brothers and my cousins and mostly all the men in the family they was on gun team from 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 young you know so i kind of grew a fascination so to hammers that was your surrounding guns. basically that was exactly your coming home seeing pounds of weed counting money helping my step pops count thousands of dollars and he give me two three dollars at a young you know at a young <laughs> age like yeah <laughs> counting thousands <laughs> and like, giving you two feet. yeah so i'm helping him you know young and then from there you know back then five dollars was a lot of money you know we get a whole bunch of candy so um i took to the streets around young man i had to be like 14 15 uh armed robberies like i said home invasions serious things fam and like in brooklyn if you don't understand we roll in clicks everything is clicked up it's, like it's if you see here. calisthenics yeah teams gang, gang culture is big it's big in yeah, the whole states to be honest and, and it's just always been like that not necessarily the culture wasn't as deep as california where you blood i'm crip my son that's born, he's blood and he's crip. It, it was, it, you know, because we come in from first, second generations, immigrants, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so I started to um, play with them guns, caught a, a armed robbery, went to Rikers Island, came out. And how, how, how long do you do? Um, for my armed robbery was like six months. Then I ended up with five years probation. And what, what, so your first, your first um, time you went in prison, how, how old were you? I was 16. Allah. But my first initial case was a stabbing at 15. Okay. Yeah, slap boxing with one of my friends. Yeah. And not necessarily a friend, but a dude we know, we just slap boxing. He got phys real physical because he couldn't. Handle it. Boom. Yeah, choked me out, stabbed him up right there. Boom. End up <laughs> getting some, I didn't end up doing no time for that because I was, uh, they call it youthful offender, you know, YO kind of like YO status, but they locked me up and all of that stuff, and I got released and all of that. I had to keep going to court. Then caught the um, armed robbery at 16. You know what I mean? Then I got shot around when I was 17. You know, shot in my chest, came out my back at a house party. At this time, I'm already banging what, what is known as BMW. 
Brooklyn Most Wanted. Tell them, BMW. Yeah, so, hey, you guys know BMW as the car, bro. Yeah. BMW here in Brooklyn, New York is known for something else. It was a big gang out here in New York. Brooklyn uh, Most Wanted, you know, and then they had Decepticons, which was like our rival gang. But this came out 1989, 1990s. And this is where all of the the initiations happen. This is called a U, as you can see, this school, Winthrop. It's like the U. So this is way before my time. I'm born 85. So at this time when BMW is out, I'm five years old. So later on in life, when the Bloods and the Crips came out here, I used to go against it. Okay. Because I was like, fam, we from Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah, we yeah, from yeah. New York. Yeah. We, we trendsetters. That's how I felt. Why are we taking a gang from Cali? Yeah. So there was like, little BMWs scattered. Okay, okay. And across, I was like, across New York? Yeah, across New York here, Canarsie. So one of the, um, a dude that was a little bit older than me went to another school outside our district and he ended up adopting the gang. And I was like, oh, BMW, this is, oh yeah, we, we're about it. This is Brooklyn, yeah. <laughs> I'm, now I'm already running a whole area where I'm at, you know, fam? So we rocked with it. Okay. Come to find out, one of the almost like the OGs of it okay. was living in our neighborhood, you know, basketball and stuff like that. So we went, got with him. He brought us over here. We started meeting all of the older dudes that was BMW from way back in the days. Okay. And then. And how, how old were you back then? Sorry? How old like 15, 16. From, years. from teenagers, you were basically involved. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Early 2000s, 2000s, if that. And then, start, you know, guns. Then we just took, you know, I started a joint called, if you look at on the phone, BMW is 269. Okay. So I started my own set because it started to get, so I was like, nah, let's separate, you know, and I started 269 and then they started 718 BMW, all-star BMW. So in, in BMW itself, the gang, you had different sex. Yeah. I started that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not trying to glorify. We're just like, Alhamdulillah. bro. Alhamdulillah. Bro. Alhamdulillah. And, I have a reason. And from there, I, subhanAllah, it just went went crazy. I had dudes under me. So, like, if he's one of the big acts, right, in Bima, he's going to have a, a baby Jahidu, yeah. and then he's going to have a mini Jahidu. <laughs> right yeah, yeah, two yeah, people yeah. that's young one is gonna the mini is gonna be this age so say you're 20 yeah you're gonna have a mini that's like 16 yeah. 17 then he's gonna have a baby you know what i mean that's yeah. a little younger no a baby then a mini excuse me and that's how we did so i had a my name was sinister you know what i'm saying so i had a baby sinister, sin no. <laughs> and a mini sin and i i'm not gonna you know there's rougher and tougher places than Brooklyn. I'm not going to lie. We, we, we lived good. We have million-dollar brownstones in the hood where killing and shooting happened. I've seen worse places in Philly, Chicago. But we was playing. You know, I was outside. I was in the streets. I had the hammer on me. It was like a thug. It was like how you treat anything else. I, I took it as a religion. Manalo. You know, and... Yeah, from there, man. So from 16, you was involved in gang, um, um, what is it, gang business, BMW. You said you was in and out of prison from age 16 as well. Yes. So what was your f like big case that you went in? Because you went to that island. What's the island? Rikers Island. Rikers Island. So I went there like at 16. Six, at 16, you went in there. And yes. how long did you do at 16? I, I did that six months for the armed robbery. Okay. So, so when I got out, by the time I was 18, that's when I caught an attempted murder. A.M. So you got done for A.M. Yes. And how many years was that in the in the state? Sixty months. Sixty months. Which is roughly five years. Five years. Five years. So that was your longest sentence. That was my longest sentence, but okay. I ended up doing over ten years in prison. Tell us. Right. Tell so us. So now, us. after coming out for that sixty months, alhamdulillah, I was doing I was doing beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I was upon khair. Islam. So that, oh yeah, so when did you take the Shahada? When did so, 2003. 2003, so, when, you, when you went the second time? Yes, when I went to Rikers Island. That was my third time, actually. The, the second time I went to Rikers Island, I only did like 11 days yeah. for assaulting a security guard in, 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 in high school. Okay. So by the time I got, so it's the stabbing, it's the assault on the security, right. then it's the, the, um, the attempted murder. Okay. So now I'm sitting on Rikers Island, 
2003. Okay. I, I, I'm started smoking cigarettes. Yeah. They banned it. Now only the police are bringing it in. So now we can't go to the, the adults okay, to get okay. it. You know, we're in the adolescence, 18 and under, 18 and 16. So I'm like, I get my sister, yo, bring bring me up some money, yeah. some cash on the visiting floor, because it's contact visits. People are doing all kind of stuff, having sex, oh, no, all no. kind of fawahish on the visiting yeah. floor. So I'm trying to get some money to buy some cigarettes. And she like, yo, my boy, my, my you know, her husband in there, his boy, yeah. does the cigarettes. I said, subhanAllah. Her husband locked up at the same time. Me and him got together. Come to find out, the his boy is Muslim. Okay. His name is Muhammad. Muhammad. But he's moving all of the cigarettes. Okay. And he's the Amir. Amir is the leader, yeah? Yes. Allah. So unfortunately in prison, you got to get the best of the worst okay. to actually lead. All right. And um, they called me down to the imam's office. At this time, I'm rough and tough. Mm. I got my own house. I'm running the housing unit to Top Body Shop, right? That's what they was calling it. In two, back side. Yes, two up the north side. So it's my house. So uh, they say, yo, the imam want to see you. I'm like, who's that? They're like, oh, it's a religious leader. Go over here. Come to find out they got a mosque. I don't know nothing about Islam. Okay. Don't know what a masjid is. Don't know what a imam is. So when I get there, I see a dude, Kufi. I'm like, what? what's going on with this boy? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's basically what the people think of you right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, So Allah. he got on a chain, obviously. It's a Allah chain, silver joint. You know, we get to wear regular clothes. So he's like, yo, you Keisha brother? I'm like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. He's like, yo, come over here with me. I go into the outside imam's office. Okay. You know, because he's the, he's the inside Amir because he's locked up. Right. Then we have an outside coordinator. Okay. And it's two outside coordinators, but this time it's just one in there. They helped me with Sadaqa. Yo, get me on the phone. Do the, he's like, yo, come down here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm going to hit you off. And then Friday, we have another service. You come down and I'm going to hit you off. Whole time he's luring me into Islam with the cigarettes. <laughs> the way Allah works, one Allah. So I'm coming down there Monday. First time I come down there, I see people on their heads, fam. So I'm like, well, as in like yeah, Sajda. Sajda. So I'm like, oh, this is, this is uh, what something is going on down here, fam. <laughs> you get me? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, 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 you know. So now I can understand somebody who's ignorant that looks at Islam Allah. with no kind of, you know. And uh, I sit in the back. They do their service. They pray the whole. They do everything. I'm watching. I'm there four hours. Just watching. Then yeah, cause we there for the whole count time and thing. He afterwards gives me my cigarettes fam and then he started telling me about islam and Inshallah. and i'm like i got gold teeth yeah yeah back then yeah wow braids how old were you then 17 yeah i was 18 18 okay so this goes on for quite some time so now people are saying yo that's your uncle so they thinking we light skin yeah long story <laughs> this is a long story so anyway fam he forces me into islam he forced me yeah like Yo, just accept Islam. And I'm like, oh, I'm not ready. And then one day he's up there talking and he's sitting down and he says, my nephew ready to accept Islam. <laughs> and the masajid, the musalla is packed, fam. Oh, now, I don't know. I just go up there and I accept Islam with no ikhlas. SubhanAllah. Do you understand what's going on, fam? Put yeah, your finger fam. out. Everybody saying, Allah Akbar, hug me. <laughs> I'm going right back to the block to smoke cigarettes and eat some pork grinds, fam. I don't know, like, all right, whatever they was talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And this, and eventually, going down to Jumar, I start hearing about the jinn. This, that. And then from there, met another brother, Shakur. He's the one who started having me pray. Learn Surat al uh, Fatiha. Learn. Yeah, after being in a halakha with some brothers, it became like a competition to learn. And then I felt like, you know, like, what? How he knows this and not? I? I don't know. And then hey, that's where the journey began. MashaAllah. So 18. Came out. Fus and Islam. Of course, happened for, <laughs> happened, happened for the best. And then when did you come out of prison? I came out 2008. How old were you? I was 23. 23, okay, let's carry on from 23. Yeah, so 23, I'm in the streets um, <clears throat> quite some time, married a um, couple different times. Well, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So I end up moving to Jersey. 
uh, me and his sister is married. And um, mashallah, we, we, doing, we doing good. I get a job at an Islamic school because now at this time I'm memorizing the Quran once I was in, you know what I mean? Learn how to read Arabic. I'm doing a lot better. I'm teaching Islamic studies in a school. Shout out to Sheikh Sa Ahmed Salim um, who gave me that opportunity. Alhamdulillah. And then there was a young sister in there at 17 at the time. I think I'm about 26. And this is where my second bid came in at. Why? Because I'm in Jersey mm. on parole. Okay. I'm living in Jersey, yeah. but my parole doesn't know I'm living in Jersey. So work. now I'm out of state. Uh, and that's, that's against the... Exactly. Okay. You know, but it's but so... Did you know this knowingly or just you kind of like... You thought yeah. It won't, it won't come back or it's not that deep. It's not that deep because yeah. we go out... Because when Cause, you look at... Yeah, because we're, we're, we're staying in New Jersey right now. This is through your <laughs> tunnel, bro. <laughs> that's like 10 yeah. minutes through the tunnel. So, you know, you do what you you gotta do, and it was it was difficult trying to find work, do this, do that. So that's how I caught the situation when they try to charge me with a sexual assault. Oh and God. as I explained in my long video, they try to charge me with having a relationship, a, a, a illicit relationship. They saying it was consensual, it's right? But they, she's a virgin. It's one on one. So this is how I came out. <laughs> of the that yeah. situation unscathed by Allah's permission because the mother couldn't yeah we're gonna we need the lil you get what I'm saying truth always comes out from Allah and that's how I ended up because I caught that case in Jersey uh, I ended up doing almost like 20 something months maybe 20 no I did more than 27 months on that one it was like probably almost three years, three years yeah. but because I was fighting the case so long yeah. and before I beat it I had to go to New York to do time for violating the parole. So that, how many years was that? It was about like three years. So, okay. All in all, you was in... Yeah, in Jersey around like three years. I believe, yeah, three years. It's been, it's been a minute. So that's when that happened and I got out and Allah saved me from that situation. Literally, they was, gonna, they was trying to put me on sexual parole. I don't think you guys understand what that means here in the States. S sex offenders. Sex offenders, you have that hit? Yeah, yeah, we, have, we got Subhanallah, that. Subhanallah, no. In the UK, it's one Allah. I couldn't live at in this house. Why? Because there's a it's school here. Yeah, 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 yeah. A thousand feet from a school. Even like getting certain jobs, you get affected, right? Get affected. They was, you know, if I wanted to go home and my nieces are underage, quote unquote, you can't live there. It's one Allah. So alhamdulillah, I fought that joint tooth and nail. Alhamdulillah. And Allah um, saved me from it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, bro. Yeah, and that, and that's a long story in itself. I wish I could go into that too, but check it out. Check out on the Rip Pass. Yeah, now cool. then, after that, I'm out. Ray Ray Tay Tay. I'm back on the block. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Married. Yomul Eid. Eid. First time off a of parole in over 15 years. How, how, um, how old was you here? <clears throat> I can't remember. Close Had to 30? To, yeah, close. Close, close to 30. Close. We did, we did quick math, you get me? Quick math on that. So 2015, yeah, close to, definitely close to 30, right? And then um, I go to Yomul Eid, the day of Yomul Eid after, me and my wife at the time, we go to a gun range. Okay. I'm like, subhanAllah, this is a celebration. This is the first time I've been off a of parole or out of prison in 15 years. Alhamdulillah. I'm done with, with this. Allahu Akbar, let's celebrate. One of the things I've used to love in Jahiliya was guns. We went to the gun range. Hey, it's fun. We, we was there yesterday, but I can't lie, it's lit. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> it's lit. So I thought I was doing this legally, paying my taxes, working, making good money, $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 a week. Allah Feds Allah. come and see me. Yo, what's going on, fam? They searching, you know, trying to find me for some kind of terrorist act. So what, they just, for no reason, they come and Yeah, because what, what they do um, sometimes is they look at the books. They check who has felonies. And it's like, yo, if y'all know that this is illegal, why don't y'all let me, the, the person know when they go in there. Okay. You know, at, you can't 100%. do this as a felon. 100%. So they arrested me and, and I did almost 46 months in prison because they said felon in possession of a weapon. It's called a 922G. It's not a state law. It's a 
federal law federal that if you ever caught a felony and your felony holds more than a year and a day. I got caught with some cracks. Uh, it holds three years, but I only got two months. Okay. That's, but, it, but because it holds more than a year and a day, I can never possess a firearm legally. So you go to a gun range or my, my man right here has a license to carry and he has a gun on him, fam, and I'm just with him and I knowingly know he possess a gun. Yeah, done for as well. And that's right now as well. Are you what? It's one of law. You get what I'm saying, fam? So they got these laws designed. It's one of law. And that's what they did. I did like 40 something months. And then what happened was that was the birth of Rip Right. Birth of Rip Right. Now tell us that. In the feds, fam. Yeah. In you the feds. In, well, inside. Yeah, inside because. You start working out basically. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, exactly. And I've I've been was touch dibbling and dabbling, but not at this high level. And in the feds, it's a lot of k killing, a lot of stabbing. You know, the Mexicans is beefing with the blacks. Just inside. Yeah. Black so no, this is oh. federal. federal. State oh. state is oh. one thing, and feds is a whole another thing. Feds oh, has man. prisons in every single state, and states only have prisons in they the state. Yes. And the fed is basically <laughs> if you get locked up in Alabama, you go to prison in Alabama. Alabama okay. You get locked up. If you get locked up in the feds, you can go oh, to pr Allah. prison anywhere in the fifty something states. Allah. Yeah, and Alhamdulillah, rip right. Alhamdulillah. What when I tell a lot of people was was already a movement. All I did was take it from feds to the streets. And I and I Before we get to that, where did Rip Rat come from? Where did you get that name from? Th this is what I'm about to okay. tell you. This name was already established okay. in federal prison. You, that's no. your... No. Okay, all right. I, all right. And that's why I tell people all the time, Rip Wright is the team. Okay, inshallah. Not the name. Not the name. The name is Shu'ab, Islam. Islam. Yeah. Hayek Allah. So it was, you know, you see a dude, if he was Rip Wright, you know, they say, yo, Rip Wright. And he say, body tight. Right. <laughs> you get me? You get me, fam. Yeah, if you yeah, rip yeah. right, that means your body, body tight. tight. Six pack, everything. Big facts. <laughs> Big back. <laughs> Big back. Carry on, carry on. And alhamdulillah, I pushed it to another another level. So shout out to Hawk and Rel who kind of really brought the, the rip right movement in the federal prison from zero to 100. And I brought it from zero to 100 on the street. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And this was around 20... Um, so I got out 2018. SubhanAllah. This is recent, you know. This September. Is what, like six years? Yeah, 2018 September. And I was trying to get a job, trying to do this. And then eventually in about 2019, the beginning of 2019, I said, I'm going full fitness, fam. That's Nothing it. is working. That's it. And YouTube, and I start a proper thing. Right? That's proper thing act. So Come I started on. our proper thing act. <laughs> and uh, we pushed it from there. By the time 2020 hit, dude came up on me. Yo, I got these these sticks. I thought he invented them the whole time he didn't. But that's a whole nother story. But he's seen that I was somebody that had, uh, he seen something in me. Sure. A little freaky. And uh, once he entered, double crossed me uh, eventually. And that's why I'm doing rip right rip sticks on a on a dolly no partners soul soul by yourself solely by myself besides Qasim. Qasim. Sure. you know what i'm saying because every business partner i get involved with Akhi. It's muslim non-muslim -Muslim. you name it the money just intoxicates people you know the fame of it everything and you know it don't work well so that's another important lesson when you're doing business with someone make sure they have the same mindset the deen the akhlaq and the fear of allah as well yeah, you don't really see too many business partnerships last, oh, unfortunately. No, no. Unfortunately. You know, and <clears throat> yeah, 2020, we shot all the way up, 50K that that year, 150K the next year, What's 250. That on, on YouTube? No, 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 I'm oh, talking about money. The money, yeah? Allahumma bay. Yeah, 1.5 last year. Uh, we, we already pushing a million already this year, and it's not done, and it's just. Allahumma bay. A million, you look ahead that, bro. And Someone, look, you guys, the last five, ten minutes, if you guys are still watching, you guys heard his story, bro. Man, in and out of prison, he did over ten years. Got done for AM, you know, a lot of stuff. So, in most cases, you think someone like this, how is it possible for them to come out of that situation, become a millionaire? Allah blessed them with fame as well. 
you know, the deen as well, mashallah. So that just shows you, it don't matter where you come from, it don't matter, your, it don't matter what your situation is, you know, your past, it don't matter what your past is. Of course, everything happens for a reason, but when you have tawheed, when you have tawakkul in Allah, you, you work hard, your intention is good, Allah will bless you and Allah mubarak. I think Ripa is a big example of that. I told you, but again, I'm going to keep saying it, that. Just listen to his story. There's more in, on his page. But someone like this is a big inspiration, not only for me, but I think it should be for a lot of brothers, even sisters, whoever's out there, like the mindset he had. What was your mindset? Tell, tell us that, bro. Because look, the situation, when you, the environment you come from, bro. Because look, we've been in New York, Brooklyn, for, for the past three, four days. Bro, it used to be killing. Bro, this drink was, this drink was a... You couldn't come to this Allah, area like, at one time, just... Gruesome, bro, like... Yeah, this now, is the deuce. Now, bro, you look here, bro. He's making Winter. millions. Allahumma barik. Allahumma barik. Allah protect you and bless him <coughs> with more. He's making millions. But that's all from Allah, and that means he's doing something right. That means whatever he's doing, his intention is good. The people is helping. And one thing I was going to mention to Rip, like, last two, three days, I've been with the brother. Even the brother's here from the UK. We've been with him. He said he did a workshop with me. Allah my brother, the love he gets from his community, bro. May Allah bless them and obviously may guide them as well. But may Allah bless him more. Is is unreal. We did settle on the bars. You have to understand. Right now we're in a right now we're in a town or city. A lot of people they're struggling financially. They're struggling with opportunities. Ripra is literally giving out money, bro. He's providing for them, but he's making them work for it. He's not just giving out free money. He's making man work for money so like for example he, he has his um he has his battle thing called settle on the bars make sure you go and check that out he gets athletes across the states not just in new york by the way we had athletes from florida, florida. from different states from different um yeah. cities they come together they battle it out no violence by the they battle out with calisthenics and they earn the money you know they earn the money and that just shows you with whatever allah's blessing with him all the money he's getting he's giving back to the community you know, that's a, that's a form of sadaqah as well. And this is maybe why Allah is blessing with him more and more. So what, what was your mindset with that, like giving back to the community? Why, why are you like monetizing? Why are you helping them out? Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, to much who is given, much is required, right? That's what they say. And I just feel like eh, if I can do something, you know what I'm saying, especially with a surplus of, of income, and then obviously it's always gonna it's gonna come back whether Perfect. it comes back monetarily baraka wise you need Allah is gonna give it back to you so so the mindset is just to 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 give and you shall receive man and um most people that I see that's misery and, and stingy they don't they don't and that's, that comes from my religion, bro. Uh, they don't get. They don't, they don't get. get much. You, you you stay at a certain spot. So 100%. I'm like, yo, wow. I, I gave away over 30 something thousand dollars from January all the way up until now. Oh, this wow. is selling on the boss 11 so far. We've been giving out like this 3K. This is under a year, guys. This is literally nine months, almost nine months. And he gave away how much again? Yeah, over 30,000. Okay. And people forget, like, in, even in Islam, it's all about giving back. Of course, give to your means, give to what you can afford. But Allah, but a lot of people right now, they're very stingy, as you said. They keep to themselves. They don't want to help people around them. They don't want to give back. So it's just gonna build you. Exactly. People don't really and 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 people don't un understand. Even with me giving back the whole time, it is is helping sell it on the bars as a business. It's helping rip right as, as a, a business. business. It's helping the people get shine on the rip right sell it on the bars platform and help them grow whatever they got going on. So it's just a constant. Everybody's benefiting or um, once you use your money for the right exactly. things. Exactly, and risk comes from Allah. You know, Allah tests you with the risk he, he, he blesses you with. He tests you with everything he gives you. And the, one of his tests is like he's probably giving a million. Let's see what it does with a million. Other people, when they get millions, one Allah, they'll go casino, clubbing, drinking. I'm talking about Muslims, bro. Like, exactly. I know some Muslims. I don't want to expose, but they do a lot of that. But if Allah blesses you with a lot of wealth, he wants to see what you do with it. And look at the Sahabas, you know, we have like Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, oh, yeah, wow. we have um, um, Abu, um, Bakr. Abu Bakr Siddiq, we have um, Uthman, Uthman bin Afwan, we have um, even people like Umar bin Khattab, you gave, know, they, they, gave. Were, bro, they, were, they were people with wealth, but it's what they did with their wealth. You want wealth not in your heart, but you want in your hand, you want a tool. And I feel like if you utilize it the right way, Allah will bless you more. Of course, your akhlaq, your deen, Especially your deen has to be on point. Try not to sin. 
And I think repentance is a big thing, right? Ah, you, you come from a Jahiliya background. You know, you come from a background. Bro, it's constant. It's a constant struggle. Subhanallah. It's a constant struggle not to be who I used to be. You get what I'm saying? And when I say that, I don't mean like every day I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get outside and just <laughs> cook one of these jokers off. <laughs> yeah. You know? No, I'm just saying like sometimes you're put in a situation where the old you, he comes out and you're like, subhanAllah, yeah. he's... Tested. That, that dude's still around? 100%. And it's been over 20 years since I've really been in the streets, you know, and you you will, you will be tested. Do you feel like it's your um, your deen, Islam, helps you with that? Oh, yes, to, to keep the discipline, yeah, and to try to keep my... Because in Jahil, I was never, not saying a talk. I used to talk my talk, talk my junk, but when it got serious, it was no talking. Silence. Yeah, so now I've been in situations in Islam where it got serious and it got to a point where it was words it was anger i was flamed on i was angry you know and it would have never got that far in jahil okay. it would have already been that's it but action this is where islam helps you of course, the will, will of allah alhamdulillah Ayyua. so coming back to that man like this just shows you look man it don't matter where you come from what your situation is the environment around you if you have allah if you have the deen and you have good intention and you want to do khair, you could go out there and get it. But the choice is yours, right? It's Ayyua. up to what choice you make. You could either, we're not trying to just promote, all right, take the calisthenics route, become an entrepreneur, become a businessman. It could be anything you do in life. Just make sure you're doing, you know, good for people. Make sure your intention is good. And of course, worshiping Allah, pleasing Allah, try to avoid the sins. And even if you have a ba bad past, just make sure so you sincerely repent and try your best to not go back to it and do that sin or whatever you're doing, yeah? Huh? 31, 31 minutes, yeah? Okay, no worries. So, we're gonna almost finish off here. Rip, give them some advice, man, before we call it off. What do you wanna, because I have a lot like, of young viewers, bro. Yeah, so like the brother said, right? Uh, you could get what you want. Some people like fast cars, some people like nice cars, some people like jewelry. Whatever it is that you want, you can do it halal. Halal, 100 You like more than one woman, it's a proper way to do it. You know, you like money, it's a proper way to do it. You like to travel, it's a proper way to do it. Islam has made that possible. It's not no other religion where you got to guess. The Mashaykh, the Sahaba, the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nothing, no, turn, no stone was left unturned. So you just got to do it and you got to be consistent with doing it. You can't, I tried to learn Arabi. How long has it been? Two days. How you, you ain't try, <laughs> Oh, I haven't gained any muscle. How long it's been? Three two weeks. weeks. Two, yeah, there you go. Achi, this takes years. Everyone wants shortcuts. Shortcuts, and that's ever since but the microwave. Exactly. Said, the, the, uh, instant. So you can't, you're not going to get whatever you want instantly, yeah. and you ain't going to get it with inconsistency. What I did was I bit down and I grind hard on the pavement since I've been home nonstop. If you look at social media, if you look at such six seven thousand posts that one thousand posts on youtube you know some people get it easy me i grind. know what it it was a grind out it was a grind inshallah. it was a grind so coming back to that man take this bro take this hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you guys know more about islam um rip right go and check out his page you know he's very known check out his um youtube instagram tiktok whatever and yeah, man, we're going to just call it here, man. Just remember, take the gems he gave away. Listen to his story. Try, reflect. If, if you come from a similar background or if you have a similar situation, try reflect from it and just take take gems. Take, all right, what can I do from here? All right, and to grind here, you know, do this, do this, because this guy gave away a lot of stuff here, man. So may Allah bless him. I mean. Keep blessing him. Bless you with more rip right in the man, health, wealth, everything you do. And yo, remember, from the streets, to prison, to the streets, to Islam, to a millionaire. This man did that, bro. So it's possible for anyone else. Allah my Barak. Amin. Wa fiqh wa barakallah. Assalamu alaikum, my people.